Congratulations on reaching chapter 3 in our text. This is probably the most frustrating chapter for students, particularly those who have not been exposed to formal logic. Therefore, I wanted to prepare some notes and audio that may help you as you read the chapter. You may find that you have to go through the short presentation and read the chapter a couple of times before the lessons really sink in. We are focusing in this chapter on forming arguments. This is the foundation of moral discourse, for logic allows us to compare and contrast arguments according to the same ground rules. To begin, there are two types of arguments, deductive and inductive. Deductive arguments are arguments constructed in such a way that the premises give logically conclusive support for the conclusions. The premises of inductive arguments, on the other hand, offer only probable or likely support for their conclusions. One of the most famous examples of inductive reasoning is our belief that the sun will rise tomorrow. While we have millennia of data verifying the fact that the sun has risen on every other previous morning, except during times of eclipse, of course, uh, we cannot deduce from that data the certainty of the sun rising tomorrow. We can only infer based on past experience. So deductive arguments are conclusive, inductive arguments are probable. Let's look at a couple of examples of both types of arguments. In example one of the deductive argument, we can see that the conclusion follows logically from the premises. All men are mortal, and since Socrates is a man, Socrates must also be mortal. In example two, the inductive argument, we can assert, based on the history of cohabitation between people and dogs, that dogs are generally friendly toward people. Since Victor is a dog, it would be a reasonable assumption that Victor is friendly to people. We can't, however, know for certain that Victor's friendly to people because we also have experiences in which dogs are not so friendly. So the conclusion for our deductive argument is much stronger than the conclusion for our inductive argument. Notice, however, that should we change the premises, the result of our arguments also change. This is because we have changed the form of the argument. We will talk about the forms momentarily, but let's first look at why form is important. In the first example, we could logically conclude that Socrates is mortal based on the premises that all men are mortal and that Socrates is a man. We cannot conclude, as we see in example three, that Socrates is a man based on the premises that all men are mortal and that Socrates is mortal. Being mortal is a quality of men, but it is also a quality of other types of beings. Reason tells us that being moral is not sufficient for us to conclude that Socrates is a man, even if all men are mortal. Socrates could be a woman or a lizard and still be mortal. Take a look at the next example, our inductive argument. We cannot infer that most dogs will be friendly to Victor just because Victor is a person and most dogs are friendly to people. Our conclusion does not follow from our premises. We can reasonably conclude, as we saw in example two, that if Victor is a dog and most dogs are friendly to people, that it is likely that Victor would also have that quality. But when we change the second premise and make Victor a person, we have changed the focus of the argument. Dogs being friendly to Victor does not logically flow from his being a person. And now let's take a closer look at the forms of arguments.